If you're fattening cattle or growing slow, you're probably missing this one thing. And no, it's not more feed or better genetics. It's silage. But not just any silage. This method changes everything. In this video, you'll see how to make it and how fast it works. Welcome, fellow ranchers and cattle enthusiasts. We all share a common goal, to raise healthy, strong cattle that reach their target weight efficiently. You invest in good animals, you provide pasture, you supplement their feed. But sometimes the results are just slow. The daily weight gain isn't what it should be and your bottom line feels the pressure. Has this ever happened on your farm? You do everything by the book, yet the scale tells a different story. The problem often isn't the quantity of food, but the quality and digestibility. And that's where the power of properly made silage comes into play. Many people think of silage as just a way to store grass for the dry season, a simple emergency food. But that's a huge misunderstanding. High quality silage isn't just stored food, it's fermented, super digestible, energy packed rocket fuel for your cattle. And the best part? Almost anyone, from a small scale farmer to a large operation, can master this. So, what is silage really? In simple terms, it's forage, like corn, sorghum, or grass, that has been chopped up, compacted to remove air, and sealed in an airtight container, like a silo or a bag. Without oxygen, beneficial bacteria begin a process of fermentation. They convert plant sugars into lactic acid. This acid acts as a natural preservative, pickling the forage and locking in its nutrients. Think of it like making sauerkraut or pickles for your cattle. This process makes the forage more palatable, meaning the cattle love to eat it, and far more digestible than dry hay. When food is more digestible, the animal spends less energy breaking it down and more energy on growth. That is the secret to accelerating results. Now, not all silage is created equal. This is where many producers go wrong. Making bad silage is not only a waste of time and resources, but it can also be harmful to your animals. In a moment, I'll explain the single biggest mistake that ruins a batch of silage. But first, let's look at the three pillars of a perfect fermentation. The first pillar is choosing the right crop. While many grasses can be used, the undisputed king of silage for fattening is corn. Why corn? Because it's packed with energy in the form of starch from the grain. This high energy content is exactly what fattening cattle need for rapid weight gain. When you harvest the entire corn plant, stalk, leaves, and cob, you get a perfect blend of fiber for rumen health and energy for growth. If corn isn't an option in your area, sorghum is an excellent alternative also providing great energy content. The second pillar, and this is critically important, is harvesting at the perfect time. This is where so many people make a costly error. If you harvest corn too early when the plant is too wet, the stock will have a high sugar content, but the kernels won't have developed their starch. You'll get a sour, less energy dense silage. If you harvest too late when the plant is too dry, the stock becomes hard to digest and it's extremely difficult to compact properly. You'll trap oxygen, which leads to mold and spoilage. So, what's the sweet spot? For corn, we look at the milk line on the kernel. If you break a cob in half, you'll see a line separating the hard, starchy part of the kernel from the soft, milky part. The ideal time to harvest is when this milk line is between one half and two thirds of the way down the kernel. At this point, the entire plant has the ideal moisture content, which should be between 60 and 70%. You don't need a fancy lab to test this. You can do a simple hand squeeze test. Take a handful of the chopped forage and squeeze it as hard as you can. If water drips freely, it's too wet. If the ball of forage falls apart as soon as you open your hand, it's too dry. If the ball holds its shape and your hand is just moist, you're in the perfect zone. That's a trick from old school cattlemen that science has proven to be incredibly accurate. The third pillar is the process itself, chopping, packing, and sealing. The chop length is crucial. You want the pieces to be about half an inch to three quarters of an inch long. This size is small enough to allow for tight compaction, but long enough to provide the effective fiber the cow's rumen needs to function correctly. 
Once it's chopped, you must act fast. The goal is to get it into the silo and compact it as quickly as possible. The enemy of good silo is oxygen. The longer the chopped forage is exposed to air, the more nutrients are lost. When filling your silo, whether it's a big bunker silo, a tower, or a plastic bag, you need to pack it down relentlessly. For larger operations, this means constantly running a heavy tractor over the pile as it's being built. For smaller producers, using barrels or bags, it means using your body weight or a tool to press it down in layers, pushing out every last pocket of air. And this brings us to the biggest mistake I mentioned earlier. What is the one thing that can ruin even the most perfectly harvested crop? A poor seal. You can do everything else right, but if your seal is not 100% airtight, oxygen will seep in. And where there is oxygen, there is spoilage. Molds will grow, the silage will heat up, and you'll lose valuable protein and energy. You're left with a pile of worthless or even dangerous feed. It's a heartbreaking waste. To prevent this, use high-quality plastic sheeting, overlapping any seams generously, and you must weigh it down properly. Old tires are a classic choice because they create a great seal without puncturing the plastic. Cover the entire surface, edge to edge. There should be no plastic flapping in the wind. So let's review the method that accelerates results. One, choose a high energy crop like corn. Two, harvest at the perfect moment using the milk line as your guide, aiming for 60 to 70% moisture. Three, chop to the right length. Four, fill and compact quickly and tightly to eliminate oxygen. And five, create a perfect airtight seal. After sealing, you just have to wait. The fermentation process takes about three to four weeks. After that, you'll have a feed that is stable for months, even years, as long as the seal remains intact. When you open it, it should have a pleasant, slightly sweet vinegary smell. It should not smell like rotten butter or ammonia. A good smell is a sign of a good fermentation. How do you feed it? Introduce it into the cattle's diet gradually over a week or two to allow their rumen microbes to adapt. A good starting point for a fattening ration is to feed silage at a rate of about 2% of the animal's body weight in dry matter per day. Of course, this should be part of a balanced diet. Silage is high in energy, but can be lower in protein, so you'll need to supplement with a protein source and a good mineral mix to get those truly accelerated results. This works for everyone. If you have a large herd, a bunker or trench silo is efficient. If you have just a few animals, you can make excellent silage in large, sealed plastic barrels or specialized silo bags. The principles are exactly the same only the scale is different. Don't think you're too small to benefit from this. In fact, for a small producer, having a consistent, high-quality feed source can be the key to profitability. By mastering this method, you are no longer at the mercy of the seasons. You are providing your cattle with a consistent, delicious, and highly effective feed that will pack on the pounds in a healthy way you'll see the difference not just in their growth rate, but in their overall health and coat condition. This isn't just a feeding strategy, it's an investment in the efficiency and success of your entire operation. The knowledge we share in this community is what helps us all improve. Making high quality silage is a skill, and like any skill, it gets better with practice. Don't be discouraged if your first batch isn't perfect. Learn from it, adjust, and try again. The results are more than worth the effort. Here at Biggest Bulls and Cow, we are here to grow together as responsible and successful cattle producers. Your journey is our journey. If this video helped you, please hit that subscribe button and join our community. We have so much more to share. And now, I wanna hear from you. Have you tried making silage before? What have been your biggest challenges or successes? Leave a comment below and share your experience. Your story could be the very thing that helps another rancher solve a problem on their farm. And finally, if you know someone, a friend, a neighbor, a fellow farmer, who could benefit from this information, please share this video with them. Let's help each other raise the best cattle we possibly can. 
Thank you for watching. Keep farming, keep learning, and we'll see you in the next video.